I'm good. It's been a long hiatus, but finally we are back. Dude, I can't. Been well, a lot. Everybody gets it. Everybody gets it. You know. We've yes. Through a lot, but you know, it's it's time to get back in it. Get back on it. Yes, let's shake things up. Little let's shake it up. <laughs> Sipping my so far, oh. Wait, what happened? I said, no, I'm sipping my tea, and you have, like, a gallon of water. Yes, yes. This is water from filter water. I just keep the bottle and just, you know, whatever. Hey. I'm very, oh, man. I'm sorry. I don't like buying water. I refuse to buy water. No. As a matter of fact, if you get that reverse osmosis system, oh, my God, it's amazing. I'm telling you. Never oh, yeah? Ever again. Yeah, it's fantastic. And it's super Interesting. Easy. Yeah, my daughter introduced me to it. And now I I love it. I can't drink it. Nice. Anymore. So how are you doing, Andy? What's going on? Not much. I'm just uh, taking it day by day. Still here, home. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I had my tooth extracted on Monday. So I'm like, oh, oh my God. Jesus. Oh, my God. I had the real way all the way in the back. That teeth that they say you don't need that teeth. So they like it took them 45 minutes to take this teeth out. That's how bad this teeth was. I had 45 minutes. 18 because I have so much overcrowding. I had all four out at the same time. So I looked like a chipmunk for like a week. Oh, my daughter didn't have never had to have them. Well, they're 25 and 23. So they didn't have to take I, them out. I'm hoping they get to keep them. There's a small percentage of people that actually get to keep their wisdom teeth, so I'm really hoping that that's the case. Damn. So these two are gone, these two, and then the teeth next to the wisdom teeth is gone. But right. everything else is still here, so. Well, they look good. good for you. Thank you, thank you. And then I have a crown here from when I was 13 years old that's still, I don't know how that's still in place, but. If I had to have everything done. I was in an accident, and a couple of mine got fractured. And I had to have posts and crowns, and but and I had it done by a really shitty dentist. Actually, he didn't know what he was doing, so I had to have the redone twice. Damn! No, see, like I did research when it came to surgery because I went to this guy named Dr. Frank Orlando. He's actually one of the best in New York. So this cost me seven hundred fifty bucks to get done because my insurance doesn't cover that. So I'm just like, all right, whatever. But I don't mind because I always go to that doctor. And he's so good. Right. So if you're ever in New York, Dr. Frank Orlando is the guy to go to. They have everything in that place. That you want dentures, they'll make it right there and then. Like they're so good. I have so many best friends in the New Jersey area because we lived there for a long, long time. Matter of fact, one of my best friends lives there, and every time I go, we're always talking about going to New York because it's two hours away. It's two hours. I used to go. All is, the is it? Is it two hours away? Two hours from from where I was in EHT, New Jersey. Yep. Ah, oh, okay. Cause I live in I live, I'm. It's funny because I I'm originally from Brooklyn, but um, I I live in Bayonne, New Jersey. I'm like where the retired folks are at. <laughs> well, at least it's quiet and relaxed. Oh, my, sorry about that. Okay. Hold on. Don't freeze up. That's been happening to me lately. Yeah. Oh, what ha wait, it's not working. Wait, say something. Can you wait, say that again? Can you hear me? Yeah, oh, it's not because it's the Bluetooth. Oh, you suck. All right, anyway, all right. So, anyway, for those who are just joining us, welcome to Jam Sessions Live um, after a long time. So, today we're doing this live, and I'll say this every Thursday, we're going to be going live. And this is more conversational. I mean, we'll read poetry if you want, but we don't have to. But we're gonna, the topic today in particular is gonna be about pride. And um, there's a lot to cover. So I'm gonna be in the first hour with Amanda. And then you're gonna go on top, if that makes sense. And then Ashley's gonna join you. And yeah, so um, I guess, yeah, so how do you wanna start that, I guess? Well, um, there's some major factors that I've just recently, I mean, I just did a piece for, it's a big thing right now, obviously being pride week and all that, but, um, or is it, it's not pride month, right? It is pride week. I have, I'll be honest with you. I don't know 
about any of those things. Like last month was like mental health and all that, but I don't know a lot about that. I know whatever I know, but yeah. Well, it's either Pride Month or Pride Week. I do not know which. Any right. battles is an awesome um, platform where they um, talk about that topic quite openly. They just did a thing about it where you got to pick a piece out of um, some amazing art that they had. And it was right. like, I don't know how many different pictures. It was like 10 different gorgeous photography shots and art. And there was Black Lives Matters. There was all these different topics. And I obviously chose something that um, I could resonate with. And that was two women. And they basically had bindings over their eyes. And right. they crosses over their lips where they were trying to kiss it was basically keeping the the whole where i got the 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 artist concept was going is that it was forbidden that they were being kept away from each other and it's more of a metaphorical like condemnation you know not being an acceptance of this thing and, re, and, and it, at this point <laughs> we're living in 2020 right and come on for us to even have these issues still, like yeah. the issues that are going on that, you know, yeah. we'll a whole another topic, um, you know, it's just ridiculous to me. Cause like in 1975, cause I've done research on it. Right. Seventy five, all of these psychologists and um, psychiatrists and people in the, the know were trying to get together and debunk the fact that because for years and years and years before that they were trying to say this was a psychological issue and a disease and all this shit and i'm like that's okay. crazy i was reading all of that and in 1975 a lot of psychologists and um psychiatrists got together and they were like hmm no this is not how this is working and we need to debunk this we need to make sure that people know this is not the case that these things you know that people knew then that these are this you're born like this you cannot rewire how your brain works you can't love you can't do all of those things so anyway this whole thing started in 1975 where they were trying to debunk the whole thing that it was a psychological issue and they did over time but it's ridiculous that it's gotten this it's still being condemned it's still being um people are being crucified and not being able to love who they want to love and i mean people are getting married women and women, men and men, and it should be something that we um, don't sit in condemnation for and judge anymore. I mean, what is that? I, it's so ugly. It's so you know ugly. what it is? I think, unfortunately, when, depending on what culture you're from, like, I know when I was growing up, right, I, I grew up in a Puerto Rican Hispanic culture. My dad's like a 1950s Puerto Rican, so I couldn't even talk about shit like that when I was growing up. You know what I'm saying? We weren't allowed to. Or to even insinuate that, hey, we might be curious. We weren't allowed to do that because that's just how my household was, you know? Yeah. Like, you, like if my dad was still alive today, you try to explain to him today how life is today when it comes to, like, same-sex marriage and all that. He's not trying to, he wasn't trying to hear that. Yeah. I think my mom was more open-minded, so it's like she, she, she understood, but because my father was the, you know, the husband, she has to defend him no matter what. And it didn't help that my dad was Catholic. So that's another thing, too. Like, I know, I'll say this. Um, i say around 2003, like, my father and my sister had a fallout. And they didn't talk for nine years, right? But during the nine years, they didn't talk to each other. I'm going to say after me and my first girlfriend broke up in 2008, I was actually going through a period of low self-esteem because, you know, no matter how hard I tried to go into the dating and try, you know, because, you know, I'm still young, whatever. I had no luck with women, so, but then these guys would hit me up, like, on MySpace, yeah. and it was like, damn, but the curiosity is there, right, because sure. the part of you feels like, okay, I know I'm not gay, but then now I'm starting to become curious, because there's something about me that wants these guys to, you know, um, yeah. to be curious enough to want to gravitate towards me, so, but then the back of my head, now it goes back to my dad, right, because, oh, but what if my father finds out, oh, you know, and the way I grew up, unfortunately, it was like stuff like that. I was bad, right? Yeah. So not only that was bad, having sex before marriage was bad and, and, and all that stuff. So you try to explain to my dad, to, you know, about mental health. He, would, he didn't understand stuff like that. And it's just unfortunate that 
he never sat down with us and explained things to us and, and all this stuff. So me, my brother, my sister, we had to learn this all on our own. Yeah, yeah. And in the religion, That's forget it. about it. My dad was Catholic, so he was like. That's where I was about to go, where you're going with the religion. Because I was. Yeah, like, and he was good. Yeah, he used to be like, oh, um, that it, I don't know how to say it in English because he's Spanish. So he's like, Papa, yo catiga. Like, how do you say it in English? Like, oh, God punishes people when you do things like that. Don't do that. That's not nice. Don't disrespect his house. Don't disrespect God's house. Like, that's how my dad was, you know? And it's just, oh my God. And when you're a kid, you're scared of your dad, you know? So I couldn't even oh my God. talk to him about anything. Are you kidding? My dad has the personality of a brick. We don't really talk because he's not, you know, the best person. But anyway, you can't help who your parents are. Regardless, right. I was born and brought up extremely strict, non-denominational Christian church from the time I was born to the time I was about 13. And I'm telling you, it was more of almost like a cultish type thing. It wasn't mm. specifically a cult, but the way that they read, they ran our church, it was extremely tight with how there was no music, no dancing. There was very, it was, you, you sing the hymns, you sit down, you shut up, you listen to the preacher. Mr. That's interesting, because I know Catholicism's like that, and I know Jehovah's Witnesses is like that, where, like, you're not, it's a sin to dance and all this other stuff, so that's interesting that you're, because cause I'm, I'm, by category, I'm a born-again, non-denominational Christian, but... So am I. Well, yeah, but we'll get into later why I say it like that, because I never tell people, hey, I'm a Christian, I just say I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, and I'm a I'm a, I believe in God, but yeah. to say I'm a Christian, and there's such a big negative connotation behind that, but we'll get more into that later. Yeah. But this, there's a lot of reasons why I don't say, hey, I'm Christian. I don't say that probably, but that's just me. But go ahead. I don't want to keep cutting you off. I'm sorry, Amanda. Hi, no worries. Um, we each obviously have a strong background in the whole religiosity of why things got so murky with that whole thing with your sexuality and you know who you should love and it should only be um women and men and marriage and that's how it should be and no sex before marriage and you wait for your husband and you wait for your wife and um homosexuality is a sin oh my god yeah that's a big no-no yeah Ow. you're going straight to hell and that bothers me when people say that oh you're gonna go to help you do like why would you say like it's different okay like I, you know okay when it comes to stuff like that right there's a difference between accountability and judging somebody right because the bible does make it clear that we are accountable for each other but we gotta do it in love how does that look like so let's say if we're believers, it's okay for us to come to each other hey listen you know this is something you need to work on with god you know, we're supposed to be accountable for each other, but we, you know, and you need, you really need to stop that. Let's, we'll work on it together if we need that to lift you up type of thing. That's different. Not to say, oh, you need to stop that. Or you're going to go to hell. Like, you can't do that. And that's not what accountability is. That That's that's judging. And it's just like, no. Now, if I'm a believer and you're not, that doesn't really apply to you. Backdated and cavemanish because if you get down to what it's all about and you think about it in a spiritual sense, you have to admit and get to the crux of the matter. And that is the fact that our creator, whoever that is to whomever, the creator, God, Jesus, whomever, whoever worships, whoever, they are love. That creator is love. And if we love, then who is to say who you love? It is wrong. Who is to say that? You can't no. help who you fall in love with. You can't help who you have love feelings for. Um, this is not about something being perverse. I mean, they even they used to even categorize this in the whole, and and I I I very careful how I'm going to say this because it has nothing to do with either. But they actually used to categorize this in the whole realm of even pedophilia that it was that perverse. And I'm like, what the wait wait <laughs> pedophilia like pedophiles. <laughs> But that has nothing to do with children, though. No, exactly. But that's how they used to see it back in the day. And it was such a perverse thing and that it's as bad as that. If, you, if you're if you being homosexual, if you're with a woman or if you're with a man and you're, you know, obviously with the same, being the same gender, then you are just as bad as being a pedophile. 
that's how they were putting it. And also, if you were gay, straight, bisexual, whatever, um, mainly gay and lesbian and bisexual, that you couldn't have same-sex friends. You weren't allowed to. You, you, no, that's not possible. You're going to end up um, being thinking of that person in a perverse way. You can't. You can't have men friends if you're gay. You can't have women friends if you're a lesbian. You can't have women or men friends if you're bisexual and bisexual. see but i never that's interesting because i never experienced that like that like i was just told that that's bad can't do that because well in my case my dad's case all oh, because that's not things of god and yeah and i get it, all right fine bible does make that clear okay it's a sin but god loves the sinner and I, uh, he hates the sin but loves the sinner you know so there's like a whole thing behind that but to say I'm going to go to hell for that, it's like, you know, you can't, again, you can't do that, you know, and then, but to say, because I had, I had gay friends too, you know, but like, that was never an issue. It was just the worry of, oh, but if you keep hanging out with them, that kind of sticks to you type thing. Right. That was my dad's whole it's thing. It's funny, my sister was very best friends with a gay boy when she was growing up in high school, and they ended up being friends after that in college, and back in the 90s when you know things were being it was okay but it was still even to this day it's being condemned um it was so interesting to me that um he was openly gay and that it was not a big deal for him and i saw the ridicule and i saw the fear i saw the fear in him because being a gay man i i, I spoke to him about it later on in life when i was a little older and he was a little older and he was like you don't understand, Amanda. It's about you're afraid to be who you are. You're afraid to be your true self because, um, I mean, people then, they were doing what they do now. They they would lynch them and, and beat them up and Bye. attack them. And not just verbal and emotional attacks. It was also physical. People were afraid. But I think. People would right. realize if they were gay or if they were. Right. Evil. Or if you got caught being with a woman, if you were a woman, if you got caught being with a man, if you were a man, if you got caught doing any of these things, you were, um, and, and back in the day, my God, before 1975, some people were jailed for it. It was against the law in some places. That's crazy. Like, you know, That's we insane. our society where everything's being, the can of worms for so many different things have been open. And yeah. they, to not only discuss things freely, but they need to be talked about because it, first of all, they shouldn't have happened, but it should never have been that way. But because they were, they need to be discussed so that people, the stigma behind it goes away and so that it is normalized because it is a normal thing. These people do not think that they are abnormal. They're born this way. They don't think that they're, they don't think they're sick. And for people to put that in their minds and make them think that, that they're sick, that there's something wrong with them, that in itself is such a disgrace to humanity, right. them as human beings, because there is absolutely no shame in being with who you love or who you're attracted to. You cannot help that. You can't. Right. That's what it That's is. That's just how it is. And it's interesting you said that because um, back in the 50s, even before the 60s, you know, um, when I when me and Robin did the live with Tony Tregilio, we talked a little bit like about that too, homosexuality, because yeah. um the beast generation, you know, was basically countercultural about and that was one of the things that they were countercultural about because there was the human condition and how, you know, you know, that you have to be this way. Because um one thing for sure, and I'll say this, at least Cowan, who was also part of that generation, um she was also counterculture, right? And um, she was she was come from a, a Jewish family, right? So she was conditioned to be a certain way and act a certain way and behave a certain way because that was contrary to the family culture that she was from. And you know, so basically behind closed doors, she she had to be a certain way with her friends, which was Allen Ginsberg, her friend. Late, you know, be, they, they became lovers, and then he became a homosexual. She became a homosexual and stuff like that. But to try to do that in their respective families they couldn't even Allen Ginsberg was um homosexual and and his parents were very old-fashioned you know oh. and you know so damn it I lost my check I, I I was going somewhere with this 
Oh, no, yeah. So anyway, the thing with Elise Cowan was she struggled with identity because all she wanted to do was to be herself. And that was it, right? She used to write love letters to Emily Dickinson because she was so in love with Emily Dickinson, even though that's from a different time period. But she would write love letters, like in poems, to her. But this is how messed up it is when she passed away because she killed herself. She jumped off her, I think, a seven-story window from her parents' house. Yeah. Her parents had the neighbors throw all her stuff away. Yeah. And all of her stuff was thrown away. So all we have is whatever Leo Skur, who was her best friend, it was like a roommate that she lived with for a little bit in college, I think it was, that had that notebook, you know, that that of all her stuff. But who knows what other stuff they would talk about, even when Allen Ginsberg, where he talked about stuff, you read his poems, he teaches, he talked about things that were just so real, but they were so countercultural against how, you know, this is post World War II, you know? Yeah. And then, but that was the bridge. The Beat Generation era was the bridge into the hippies era. You know, that was the bridge that goes into that era. And even that era in the 60s was insane, 60s. right? But it's, it was so countercultural, you know? Things got cracked open with the whole, you know, um, free love all of that and that's kind of what paved the way the hippies kind of opened that door for us we need to thank them for that i'm hippie but i don't um you know i wish i was at woodstock i wish i'd been there but i was <laughs> i was i was born in 75. um but regardless the bottom line is this if we don't stand up for what we believe in and we don't talk about these subjects, they're not going to be resolved. They will never be resolved. I... With everything else that's going on, and there, let me tell you, there's a plethora. It's like there's layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of situation I... topics that we could be discussing today. But that's true. pride in particular, um, because for me, seeing it still happening today when these things have been going on for so long with a lot of other things that's been going on for so long that should have never happened. It's right. just like, there's so many judgmental, mean, nasty people out there that just cannot get over the fact that they are, that we are different, that there are different people on the planet, that everyone has to fit in the same mold. And that is not how we are as human beings. We are all different. We are right. all different. You know, we're, of course, we're we're very similar in, in who we are. Like, if you're gay, if you're lesbian, if you're um, bisexual, if you're, you know, whoever you are, we can all relate to each other. And there are so many different groups now that um, that talk and are open about it. And it's a beautiful thing that they can be themselves and they don't get condemned. And um, it's it's just a terrible thing that these people are made to feel like they are... Um, perverted right and that is wrong and it we have to change that we have to change the perspective we need to change the way it's seen we need to change the way it's talked about we need to change the fact that they're being judged and we need to let people love whoever the hell they want to love it's that's the i hear you i hear you because my whole thing is let's say like you know like in my case things of god right like in my because i i I believe in jesus and stuff like that but like you know what there's just some things you know what let god deal with that yeah. Let, let him deal with that with them and that's it, right? But with that being said, it's funny, everything you said makes sense because um, one thing I thought about was Ricky Martin, the singer, and I'll tell you why, because um, he was gay basically for the majority of his life, right? But the thing with him, and my sister's a big fanatic of him, so she used to tell me a lot of stories about him, it's not the fact that he came out, it's how he came out, because he was writing a book about his whole life, everything he's went through and stuff. So there were certain things he would talk about, but since people didn't know he was gay, it was kind of hard to just kind of release the book that he was um, coming out with, right? Sure. But with that being said, when he finally came out, right, they eventually, they did a documentary about him. One thing, especially for the Hispanic culture, that opened up a door for them because there was his, and I'll say this, for a Puerto Rican guy myself, you know, I mean, I'm New York Rican, but you know what I mean? Like that Puerto Rican culture, it's difficult for a Puerto Rican guy or a Dominican guy or whatever to come out and say that they're gay. I guess when it's, all right, uh, Pete, thank you for coming. Hey, thank you really quick. Yes, they are mean and they can be monsters. Let's really quickly say hi. Vibani joined. 
Yibney, I can't pronounce some of this. Jay Smith, 1955, 1915. Hey, how are you? Baby Bird, how are you? Hey, Ashley, I can't wait to talk to you. Kendra M. Austin, hey. Al's Poetry, hey. Colin Shore joined, hey. Roy, how are you, Roy? Kendra, uh, let's see, anybody else? Sunny joined. Elliot just got in here. Hello, Elliot. Hi, joined. So, um, um poet, I love you. Um, so <laughs> in the room, cool. All right, I just wanted to say hi really quick. And because somebody said they had to go, and we've been completely just like oh, in the topic, and we've been right. Again. No, it's all good, it's all good. <laughs> um, like, in, like, especially in the Puerto Rican Hispanic culture, especially for men, I don't know how it was for women, but I know for men, it's difficult, it was a lot difficult for men to come out, sure. especially when you have a society like again, like I grew up like. Basically, within my circle of Hispanic friends, it was difficult to even say that you were gay, right? So, um, long story short, when Ricky Martin came out, he did break some barriers, because, especially for that Puerto Rican culture, because now that allowed other Puerto Ricans to come out and say, yeah, I'm gay too, you know? And there was even documentaries about that. So, yeah. Like, this one guy telling his mother, hey, I remember when I came out to my mother, and then I asked her, hey, if I was gay, would you still love me? And the mother say yes. Yeah. So and that's just an example. I don't remember like the names of the people that they, they spoke up, but that opened the door for that culture because again, a lot of times that culture that we like you can't be Puerto Rican and you can't be gay. Even for black people, you can't be black, you can't be gay. You can't be Dominican, you can't be gay. You can't be Hispanic and be gay. Like that's just the reality of it for a long time, you know. And it's like they get it's crazy, you know. But I will say this. For a long time, even with the um, gay and the lesbian community, this was when everything started to be accepted. Um, bisexuality, which um, for a while there, it, people were teetering on either coming out as bisexual because they were afraid. And once they did, they got looked at from obviously the straight community, the lesbian community, and the gay community as, that's not right. You have to either- But you know what's funny? Unfortunately, this country has a problem, let's be honest. Like I was reading a little bit about the Stonewall thing, you know, in West 4th Street, because I, I passed by there when I used to work in New York and I used to like, um, you know, take the, take the path train and stuff like that. And um, this country has a problem when it comes to that. And the fact that, like, you look at the history of it, I'm like, damn. They used to they used to break, they used to basically raid that place because it was full of gay people. Like, that is ridiculous. Yeah. What they used to do. And now it's whatever. That whole that whole area of Manhattan, um, I think it's called the village. I don't know. It's weird with the, the, the names of the... the, the, of the the names of the neighborhood over there, because it's Christopher Street, it's West Fourth, then there's like all these places, and it's like all that gay community stuff, you know. Now it's freely open, but back in the day, especially in that Stonewall era, you couldn't. They used to raid the place and shut yeah. it down because it, they knew, oh, this gay people get get them out of here, and there was like a protest with it. It's so crazy though. I'm like, yo, this let's be honest, this country, this city, it has a problem, and I don't know, man. It's just. It's too much crap, you know? Judgmental and de it's funny. In their quest to desensitize us, they have made us more sensitive than ever. Because the 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 trolls out, the people that are getting, you know, offended, the offense. Oh my god, you can't have a conversation with someone about a political I mean, there's so much politics bullshit going on right now. Let's not even go there. We're not. Well, that's a whole other discussion. Right. But, I don't know a lot about politics, but I say that I know when people do talk about politics. It's, it's oh my God. Politics, um, sexuality, um, racism. There's these topics that you know are just don't talk about those things. If you do, you'll ruffle feathers. People won't like you. They'll think that you're being divisive. They'll think that you're dividing. And in that. In their quest to make us um, desensitized towards evil, because that's what it comes down to is evil and hate. Let's just be honest. It's about hate and evil. Um, they have made us more sensitive and more divisive and divided us even more. And it's made us more contra It's made us more judgmental towards other people because we're not understanding this bullshit. And it's wrong. It's totally, completely wrong. And yeah. um, 
you know, if we want to talk about like the, the reasons why and the, the psychology of it, that's, that's a lot to get into, but by, by human quality of how we are and who we are as people, as human beings, as a human race, as people, um, feeling for and loving who we love and whoever we want to love, um, there has to be a time when everyone finally says, you know what, there's, I mean, cause you have to look at the percentages now. It's ridiculous that even people yeah. way about it. I right. mean, you, you, you're going to love who you're going to love. You're going to feel the way you're going to feel. And it's what it is. And it needs to be accepted and it needs to be stopped being condemned. And people need to stop being so fucking judgmental. Excuse my French. I'm sorry. Just let the, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. Guys. And the back to the God thing and Jesus and God in itself, when we are talking about spirituality, even if it's Christianity, right. if it's, you know, whatever that is to, to you, to whomever's listening, to whomever's going to hear this, um, right. Whatever Wait, but before you before you could just want to say this, and this came to mind when you mentioned that, um, it reminded me of the adulterous woman when the, the Pharisees like, oh look, what do you say about this? And then Jesus, he he could have did so many things, but Jesus said, one who has no sin cast the first stone. But so her, I think what it comes down to is not sin cast if, the first stone, and not one person could cast a stone because right, and even know. Jesus None put the stone heard. down. But look at that. But even with that being said, so basically with the, the way I took all that was, okay, you know what? Um, you're pointing at her. You want to throw stones at that person because they did something wrong. But how many wrongs have you done in your life, right? There's a saying that says when you point one finger, there's three fingers pointing back at you. At you. Yep, that's right. So You know, and people need to forget that. People forget that. It's just like, okay, as much flaws as one person does um, has, trust me, you have just as much flaws as the next person. So I don't know why we're even doing this to each absolutely. other. This is, And that's how ridiculous it gets in life. You and know? it's about love. I mean, going back to spirituality and God and whomever you right. know. Wait, but you know what? But I'm sorry, because it, it's like something keeps coming in my head. I'm so sorry, Amanda. It's about we're having like a discussion and it's the way right. that, but God but is love when you say love you, you gotta be specific I'm gonna tell you why I say that because everybody has a definition of love and not every definition is correct right because oh, there's that love where that tough love right my dad had that tough love right then there's the affectionate love that's the happily go lucky love it, and there's that domestic violence like that's their definition of love because They'll stay with somebody even though they're being physically or verbally abused, but it's something about the person or the situation or the dynamic of the situation that makes the person stay, right? Yeah. That so, is unfortunately, when you say love, it's like people, I don't think people know what that love. Like for me, I didn't know what it was to love until I, I married, I, I came to the Lord, right? And then, like, once I came to the Lord, I started to understand life a little bit better. And then I met my wife. Like, I didn't know what falling in love, like truly falling in love, I didn't know until, until I married my wife. Sure. And uh, I mean, well, when I started dating her, because she was my best friend of 10 years, and then we, we started dating and stuff like that. Like, when I knew I was in love with her, like, I, it, I didn't just know it, but I felt it, and I knew, like, this is what it was. The minute we had a first kiss, I knew right away, this is the one I'm going to marry. You know? And it was one of those things, okay, now I know what true love is, because love endures all things, right? Love, you know, uh, yeah, love is, even the Bible says, yeah, love is kind, love is patient, yeah, but... Love does endure all things. Love does um, keep no record of wrongdoing, right? And yeah, it, it doesn't say, hey, I'm not upset with you. But love understands that, you know what? But I'm not going to hold on to this for a long time. Love understands that at the end of the day, yeah, we might not talk for a couple of days. But once the dust settles, I know you're still on the other side of that tunnel or that bridge. And I know you're still going to be waiting for me. Love understands that sometimes we need space before we can go back to basics. Sometimes you gotta take a few steps back to stay, take a few steps yeah. forward. Like that's the reality of it. And I think that's the problem. We don't, a lot of people don't know. I mean, to me, that's what love is to me. Love endures different things, good, bad, ugly, disgusting, whatever. But at the end of the day, the real people in your life are the ones that are gonna stick by you no matter what. Absolutely. And they're going to accept you no matter what. 
like when I, like you said, when you met your wife, you knew that that was the person for you. And for me growing up, because I happen to be um, a female of someone who, and I don't label myself per se, straight, gay, or any of that. And I have to base, I, I had to do this for myself years ago. I had to put myself in that bisexual category because I've had in the past relationships with women before my husband, which he totally understands and accepts about my myself and who I am. And the fact that, you know, that was looked down on when I was a teenager and I was a girl. And the first person that I ever really had any major feelings for was a friend. And that was just um, whom I fell in love with for the first time. And I had a boyfriend at the time and um, we were together for quite a many years, but, and we didn't talk about the fact that, and he knew, but we didn't talk about it because it still in the early nineties was not accepted. Yeah. And I grew up in the nineties. So I remember the nineties were very interesting uh, times. Yeah, it was crazy. But then um, I met my husband and we fell in love and I got married. But um, my husband knows this is, you know, a part of myself that I don't look at people and I don't say, okay, you're a man. I should love you. Um, I should love you because you're a man and I'm a woman. I've always been the type to see people and the beauty that they have inside of them and their soul and who they are as a human being. And I fall in love with a person. I don't particularly say, okay, you're a man. I'm a woman. We need to love each other. That's how it's supposed to be. No, it's about who you love. You can't help it. You can't help who you have feelings for. And like right. I said, even the, the gay and lesbian community for a very long time, they didn't accept um, bisexuality as it being real. As a matter of fact, they thought that. Yeah, I was going to ask you. I was going to ask. Um, like bisexuality, it seems like they're very, I don't want to say underrated, like they're like, for some reason, like the gays and the, the lesbians, they seem like they, they frown upon that for some reason. Like I've noticed that even in the community, that I've, I've even grown up even to this day, I noticed that, like you say bisexual, I don't know, like, it just seems to be very iffy when it comes to that for some reason. But when it's gay and lesbian, that's okay. Like what, I always wonder why that is though. Why do they look down funny. upon for happened within the last I guess so many years it's become like a fad and it's become popular for women to be with um especially if they're in a relationship with a man um it's become a popularity type thing especially the millennials to be with other women and it's okay now is it accepted I don't think so for a lot of the people but it's become a fad and it's become a thing and that in itself shows me that, okay, um, there's definitely, because it's become a fad, there are people out there, especially women in particular, and, and people in relationships, like uh, monogamous, um, uh, straight relationships, like men and women, they look at it as an exciting thing to bring, like, another woman into their relationship. Oh, and like to have. But I feel like there's mostly men that think like that, my opinion. Like, if your girlfriend's bisexual, then, oh, my God, you can have another girl with you, and you can have a three. Yeah. Like, at least a lot of guys that I've met, it's like, that's always the thing in their minds. Like, like yes, I'm marrying a bisexual. That means we get to have um, three in the bed. And I'm like, that's not how it works for people that are actually <laughs> wired that way. We fall in love with who we fall in love with. We're commit if we want to be in a committed relationship, we're in a committed relationship. It's not about, you know, um and to each their own. If there are people that have three way relationships, rock on, do your thing. Do whatever makes you happy. Right. I'm all about like I had a friend of mine like that. Oh my god, god bless his soul. Happy. My friend Johnny. We be ourselves. We all have to be ourselves and we all have to be happy. If that's what makes right. you happy. Like I had a friend of mine. That him and his wife, like let's say, like if he saw like a guy looking at his girl, and he and he knew the guy was with his girl, like he would come up to people like, "Yo, I see you looking at my wife. You know, you, you want to do something?" Like all four of us. Like but I never knew this side of him until I hung out with him one time, right? Because I haven't seen him in so long. I saw him, and I'll be honest with you, because I know him a certain way, you know, because that's what it was. 
But when I hung out with them, this is a long time I haven't seen this guy. So I hung out with him that one night and I never looked at him the same. I was just like, oh my God, I did not know he was like that. I was like, oh snap. Like, not, like I'm not disgusted. It's whatever. Yo, all right, power to you. But it's just like, I never saw him the same. But I was like, oh my God. Like, well, it was ridiculous. Know, if, you're, if you're an accepting human being, if you're an accepting individual, and, um, you know, you do have this, um, this being a part of yourself and you are in a relationship with, a, with um, a man, me being a woman, I married a man and we have beautiful children and we've been married for 25 years. I got married when I was 18, but that's what we did in Virginia back then. We got married very young. We started having babies when we were young and that's what we did. So it, it things could have gone in a completely different direction for me. If I had, instead of gotten married to college, like I was going to, but my plans changed and they obviously changed the way they were supposed to, because I absolutely love my life and my, my husband and my children and I'm blessed, but right, um, right. it's a direction for me. And I do have a husband who's sick with Parkinson's and I'm his caregiver. So um, I don't want to delve into what could happen in the future for me. But I would never say that, um, and he would never say to me, oh, you're, um, he, he doesn't condemn me. He accepts me for who I am. And that is the type of person that if you are a bisexual, that you need to be in a relationship with, whether you fall in love with a woman and you're with a woman, or if you fall in love with a man and you're with a man. If you are a bisexual, you need to make sure that your partner is completely on board with who you are as a human being, because right. we help the way we are we can't help who we have feelings for but like i said if you're in a committed loving relationship with someone who you are married to then that is your choice and that is the the path that you've chosen and that's where you need to stay and if you know for some people they do get married and they find that um they they lose that love and they lose that commitment and they end up divorcing and they they're with different people regardless of whether they have children or not that just didn't happen with us because my husband is so loving and accepting of me. I never had to, um, we never worried about any of that stuff. Now I'm not saying my marriage has been perfect. It has been quite the roller coaster. When you've been married as long as I have and as young as I did get married, there's a lot of shit that can happen in a marriage. Oh, of course. Oh, no, of course. I've only been married, what, four years? But I'll say, I mean, I've been with my wife four years. I've been married two years. But just like, when just just overall what you're saying is so true and now that there's a child involved like trust me like you learn more about yourself when you're married and when you have children absolutely you t oh my god and you know what i've learned now that my child my my first batch and i call it my first batch because i had children when i was very very young 19 and 21 and then my child my husband had two children from a previous marriage so by the time i was 21 i had four and then when i was 40 i had my son so I literally started over when my children were grown and out of the nest, I had another child. So for me, I'm getting a whole other perspective on um, raising children, um, what the, um, the norm is now for children growing up in a society. And it's very scary. It's a very, very scary thing because, you know, people might be more accepting of some things, but some people are and I'm trying to say this nicely, they're full of shit. <laughs> they act like they're accepting, right. act like it's okay, and they act like it's the norm and that you're a normal human being, but they're they're not that way. And I'm I'm learning that as I'm getting older and I'm seeing more and I'm in more um, friendships, making more relationships, um, especially reading people's work. Like there's so many controversial pieces I've been reading lately and people okay. are really opening doors and opening that can where these things need to be <laughs> Whether it's your sexual orientation, whether it's who you love, whether you're gay, straight, or bisexual, whether you um, are black, white, Hispanic, whatever your nationality. I mean, my husband is Jewish Lithuanian, 52%, and um, for 450 years, his, his, his ancestors were slaves. And I'm learning wow. all of these things that I know, right? Because you think about it and um, the black community, they're having a really hard time and they're trying to stand up for their cause and they're trying to really talk about mm -hmm. the things that they're going through. And it's 
for them, it's a stigma thing too. And they're going through, there's, I just watched a show the other day where there's a, a whole group of people that got freaking PTSD because of this, because of how their ancestors yeah. were treated and how they were treated. And I watched a video of this young boy outside playing and he's bouncing his basketball in the driveway and he sees a cop car coming by and he hides behind a truck because he doesn't want to get seen by the police. He's afraid, a young black boy, afraid, afraid of the police. And I'm like, my eyes just were like, what? Yes, and crazy. Mom, and I finally got it because since I was a little girl, I have been friends with everyone. I have never saw Me too. And I used the term seeing color because I, of course I saw color, but I didn't see anything wrong with who I was friends with. My very first right, like to me, that was black. normal. You see a black person, a white person, or a Hispanic, or whatever, different color, different yeah. shades, whatever. Um, I'll say this because my father is very interesting with him because I, I, I was friends with everybody Jamaicans, Trinidadians, black, white, whatever. Like, my dad was very prejudiced depending on the race. I don't know why he was that way, but it, it, it depend. But then he'll make some exceptions. Like, for example, like he had this thing with like Mexican people. I don't know why my dad was just like. And even with black people, and he 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 never said all people of Mexicans or the, uh, or blacks were the same, but he's yeah. saying the majority were a certain way. And I'm just like, well, I have a friend that's black, and he don't act a certain way like you're talking about. Like I understand what he's trying to say, but like he would say stuff like, oh, like like the majority of black people are are, are ghetto. I'm like, no, they're not. Not all black people are ghetto like that. Like and, and, like he I, he used to get me mad when he used to say things like that. Shine high. Median hand, hi, Sherm Dog, 64, hey, baby bird, hey, rock and right. I was going to say, um, just so you know, <laughs> there's only two people in the room uh, after a while. I, I guess like we save it, which I would love to do. They can watch whoever can watch it later. Definitely. I know because I wanted to do maybe, hey, maybe if somebody wanted to pop in and has some words to say, but, uh, <laughs> but I don't know. It's whatever. No, absolutely. If people have any questions, please start asking. And whoever does pop in, um, if they are uh, look at the replay or whatever, I mean, we can we can always revisit this subject, especially since it's new and it's probably very controversial. And a lot of people probably don't even want to log in and be seen. And I know that sounds really fucked up. Excuse my French. Sounds really messed up. I should say that. I gotta stop cursing. I really do. Um, no, no, I, I have potty mouth too. I'm trying not to curse, but yeah, no, no, I. Some people don't want to get involved in topics like this. And that's another thing to each their own. It's whatever you're comfortable with. You know, you got to stay in your comfort zone. But it's also about getting out of your comfort zone and dealing with topics that need to be dealt with and talking about things that aren't comfortable. Right. Because well, unfortunately, I, mean, I, I think we live in a society where people don't want to get out of the comfort zone. That's the sad part about this whole thing. And us being in isolation and quarantine, it's kind of put us in a bubble where we have learned to just be stuck. And I think that the mentality of that, too, we're stuck, not just in our homes, but we're also getting stuck in our minds and we're getting stuck in, in the way that we think and see certain things. But the news and politics and the hijacking of causes and just the, um, the hate that I'm seeing being spewed and the trolls that are out. And another thing that I was watching, because I had, I had to stop watching it, honestly, because it was messing with my mind a little bit. Because I, it really makes me upset and angry is you can condemn someone, ruin their reputation, their credibility, their just everything about them as a human being and destroy them by calling them a pedophile and it not being true. That's the big thing now in Hollywood. People are being called that. And you call one person that, regardless of whether it's true or not, um, and that cloud, that dark cloud is going to hang over their head forever, regardless of whether they did it. So yeah. watching the news and watching a lot of these conspiracy theorists, which, you know, I do believe that there's a whole, whole lot of truth behind a lot of it. And I do believe a lot of it is rather hearsay and people just trying mm -hmm. to spread more trolly hate around and cause more division and more divisiveness because as a people it seems that there is a whole group that love to thrive off of drama you know right
No, it's true. It's true. And drama, it seems they, they want to um, get more involved and they want to be more into the bashing of it all. And it's just, I'm so over it. It's crazy. <laughs> People need no, to be I hear you. joyful and, and love each other. I mean, that's the only way yeah, anything but un- changed. But see, but it, has, it goes back to what I said before. When you don't know what love is or true love is, it's like, it's kind of hard to do that, right? But then it's like, it, I believe, I kind of blame the parents too. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm talking about, I'm, I'm not talking about us being like before the, because anyone before us, let's be honest, we're a little bit more open-minded with a lot of things. But um, like I, I kind of blame the older generation of parents because I guess however they grew up, they grew up in a way where those things are bad. And you yeah. couldn't talk about things like that. And, oh, we're civilized. And, and oh, no, we, we can't talk about that. Oh. And it's just, I, I kind of blame the parents for that because they try to pass that on. Like, my dad, again, like, he, I, I was conditioned, he was all conditioned to be a certain way, right? Like, like if, if like whatever he said goes and that's it, I shouldn't question him or nothing. So to try to talk to him about homosexuality, that was just out of the question. Like, he wasn't trying to hear that. And it sucks because if you're the parent, whether you be, whether you um like if God forbid, knock on wood, let's say you know my my son, you know becomes a homosexual, or whatever. Like me as a parent, I need my job. I feel like I should just love him no matter what, and yes. I do. But then it's like even if I agree or disagree with why he's like that in the first place, I need to be there for him no matter what and let him know, hey, listen, I'm gonna love him no matter what. You know, because, you know, like, I always grew up in a different perspective because, like, I, I always tell people this when they ask me about homosexuality, especially because I'm a man of God and stuff like that, is this. What I, how I feel about it is not the same as what God says about it. I always make that very clear. Sure. I can tell you what the Bible says. I can tell you how God feels about it. But what that says compared to what I feel about it is two different things. And I always make that clear before I answer any questions like that because it's true, you know, and it's like, I always put different, you know, because again, I, 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 like, you know, I mean, again, I, I have to respect things of God, but at the same time, God understands we have free will. God understands that, okay, look, we're not going to agree with everything, you know, like, and then I got to ask to him at the end of the day. But what it all comes down to is what God says and how he feels and what I feel about are two different things. That's what it all comes down to. But people don't know how to differentiate things like that. And they think, oh, this is the right way and that's it. And it's like, no, because maybe the right, what you think is should be the right thing isn't the right thing for everybody else. And what it all comes down to is what makes sense to you does not make sense to everybody else. And that's the reality. But you cannot take it personal. That is the problem because God forbid you disagree with somebody. Oh, it's the end of the world. And my whole yeah. thing is, okay, but like, that's the whole well, why are you concern. taking it personal? I just want to put, the, I, I bought this shirt, right? I bought this shirt and I got it today and I'm wearing it now. Every time someone gets like that, I want to just do this. Ready? I just want to show this. Over- I, I think, think you're, you're over- overreacting. Yeah, how I'm seeing it, it's backwards. So I had to read it backwards. I think you're overreacting. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. I see what you say. Yeah, I do see it backwards here. All right. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I think you're oh. overreacting. I just want to show them this every time, like someone acts stupid. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't stand the overly sensitive BS, honestly. I can't stand the arguments. I can't stand the trolls who, you know, someone says one thing that's controversial, they post something, and then it's like the trolls go to town. They just cannot wait to attack. They are just loving this drama, the, you know, how much waves can they make? How much, how, how many people can they piss off? And it's really sad. And I just wish that people could get to um, a point where they could be more. We've already been so desensitized towards evil and being mean that it's right. it's going to take a lot. And it's going to take a lot of talks like this, honestly. Yeah. That's- so important for us to talk about these things and for us to have these conversations because unless they're spoken about unless we talk about them no one's right, going right. To, nobody's going to and there's so many people talking about it now that um 
and being hated on and being condemned and getting the, you know, it's, it's just something that we as a, as a human race needs to support and stand up for and, and try and make everyone feel the equality that we all should be feeling, honestly, because that's what it right. means, is equality and us feeling like we are all um, important that there's nothing wrong with any of us. Um, there is, right. you guys went through the whole, and I wasn't available for the mental health live, which oh, I was upset for, but I was going through my own mental health stuff at the time. Right, right. <laughs> to, um, I had a lot going on with my personal life, with my sister and my husband, and um, just, I had to try and keep my mind in the perspective it needed to be for my son and for my family. Oh, of course. And when you when you go through things like that, you have to unplug and focus on yourself for a little while. And that's another thing that you know we can talk about some other time is is keeping things in perspective, taking the time for yourself if you are involved in communities like this, and doing what you need to do to keep your head straight and your um, your perspective right. Because um, you know the topic that we're talking about today, pride and you know, gay, straight, lesbian, bisexual, whatever. It's about acceptance and it's about ending the stigma that goes along with all of that because we are all human beings, the human race. We're going to love who we're going to love. We're wired the way we're wired and we just need to be accepting of it and, and love each Amen. other. Amen. Oh, dude. Okay, so I was on my page and I jumped on to see how it was working. So... Everyone that jumped on my page when I came on basically is having the same issues. Um, a mm. lot of people are either they're not seeing that we're live or they're not getting their when you join, they're not getting their request buttons. Or oh. I, I, in three to, I logged out and logged in three times and tried my request button wasn't popping up. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see anything. So I finally did. And I <laughs> um, but someone was trying to join on mine early like a minute ago and they couldn't get on like i kept pushing okay just to see if it would work and it wasn't huh. working maybe but it's just it's, instagram it's too many lives at once we have, we're inundated it's like we think our right community is large in our mind's eye but the the vast majority of people that are actually live on ig is insane like it's yeah um, it's just slowing it down <laughs> even the celebrities have been they've hijacked our instagram oh geez louise <laughs> stick to youtube damn it stick to right YouTube. <laughs> TV and movie. let us have our time <laughs> okay so i don't even know where we were at on that conversation because that just kind of threw me oh, right off I um, discussed the fact that I was bisexual with my children. I was very open with my children from the time that they were very young. I had mentioned to them, and I never really said the word bisexual per se. I just said that, you know, I'm very open when it comes to sexuality. I was very open with them about it, and I never hid things from them. And because we were young together, like I grew up with my children, like my, young, my eldest daughters, she'll be 26 months next month. My youngest daughter will be 24 in September. So, cause I had them very, very young. And um, like I said, we grew up together and I was basically very honest with them. I'm like, well, just so you know, I've had um, in the past, I've had some relationships with some women and they weren't shocked and they weren't condemning me and they didn't, I mean, they are growing up in a different time and they were like, mom, we love you. You know, you be who you are, what you want. We love you. Da, 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 da. And of course I'm with their father and they love that. And mm -hmm. one family but they still accept me for who I am and the fact yep. that I'm different and I am married you know in a committed relationship with a, with a man my husband mm -hmm. um, but it's it's a very different situation I think um, for the Millennials and the people that are of course being raised now it's gonna be a different mm -hmm. very different people that are little like under 10 years old and then we've got our 25 to 30 year olds and they're seeing things very differently and they're very, they're so much more accepting of the fact that there are gays mm -hmm. and lesbians and it's not a big deal to them. Mm -hmm. That's why 
I'm excited for my kids because I have three kids too. And I had them when I was like 18, right? So kind of like you, we grew up together basically, right? Um, but I've always been quite open with my children as well about uh, just with my own sexuality. I don't think I've ever, besides just recently, come out and been like, okay, well, I'm attracted to to females, but not only just females, but like transgender or or also gay people, you know, like... <laughs> Uh, we did have that conversation and I'm so happy for my kids that they are growing up in this time where we can have these conversations openly and don't have to hide it um, yes. because then it opens it up for them too to be able to explore their own sexual orient orientation and even their gender if if yeah. they feel the need to. And Hi, then how are you? Hi, Imager. Hi, Mike on DMC. Hi, Hi guys. Lisa, Juicy, six in, six twenty-five. Sunny still in the room. Thoughts to versus hey. Hey guys. Hey. Welcome. Hey. If anyone <laughs> jump in at any time and have a conversation, I can pop out, and then you pop out, and then you pop back in, and you can request to come live with Ashley if it's working. It was not working yeah. for me times. It hasn't been working for certain people. But that's just IG right now with everything going on with all the lives. It's very glitchy. Mm -hmm. Definitely like a hit or miss. Hey, Culeric Cole Creations. How are you? Cool name. Flake. You can also leave a comment too. I'm trying to keep up with the, the comments in the chat too. So if you don't want to come live, you know, oh, yeah. we can Bye. still answer your questions. <laughs> Can answer questions ask questions and answer she is um what do you label yourself as again i apologize uh, pansexual uh, so p-a-n pan pansexual that's easy enough see i yeah. so much about it and mm -hmm. i knew basically you just explained to me more of what it was uh -huh. but i didn't understand that it's not even just about men and, and women it's about you know um also transgender and things like that which is cool uh -huh. and um i actually have a very sexual or and uh, is that even the right word? yeah sexual orientation as well isn't uh something that like you know isn't gonna deter me i guess <laughs> no see that's the so thing. basically everybody's invited <laughs> if that's how you want to look at it i don't know uh, but it's more of a, I'm more attracted to the personality and the connection and the heart in, in somebody rather than their parts or, or how they identify. See, yeah. that's a beautiful thing because what that says to me and what it should say to everyone, instead of people being, you know, condemning or, or judgy, it shows that you have a big heart and that you are open and you are open to loving anyone and that is a beautiful thing because there's no greater thing that we can do than to spread love and love other people because that exactly. is how we combat hate inequality prejudice that's how we get rid of all of that by loving love people. to be unconditional right and we're in a really cool mm -hmm. life, honestly um, because you see the insides and you don't look at the outside and that takes a big part. So good for you, Ashley. I commend mm -hmm. you. Well, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Poetry mm -hmm. by Jaro. How are you? Mm -hmm. Oh, like if anyone wants to jump in and ask Ashley questions, they can. At this point, we're just having an open discussion about pride and, um, you know, homosexuality, and um, pansexuality, bisexuality, lesbianism, homosexuality, all <laughs> everything's on the table. Everything. <laughs> Whatever you guys want to throw at us, let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, basically what we can do is, um, you know, have our discussion today. We'll try and save the subject, and then we can... We can, I can make this a bit bigger because we kind of decided to do this at the last minute. So I didn't mm -hmm. get up until yesterday. And then um, this is a very 
popular time in the IG community, not even mm -hmm. the writing community, to go live. So what we can do is try and map out when would be a good time for us to come on and um, create a little bit of, and talk about it again. Yeah, and we can we talk about it all the time. Yeah, we talk about health a lot too. We can talk about that all the time too. <laughs> yeah, well, we can all go there. Let me tell you. <laughs> I knew you were involved in the mental health live, which was cool. What exactly did you mm -hmm. guys? What was your main discussion when you were involved in the mental health live? Like, what was your main thing to talk about? Um, we. Basically, well, we read poetry, like, you know, we do, and uh, I have multiple diagnoses, and my thing uh, is recovery. Uh, recovery is definitely possible, uh, and it takes you doing it deliberately, just like you were to recover from an addiction, and uh, I don't know, I'm really big on having these raw, ugly conversations about stuff that needs to be said about mental health, too, and you know, self-harm and suicide and, and all that stuff that needs to be normalized <laughs> so that it's not so much of a shock when people have to, you know, face it. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So that's, that's my thing. <laughs> that's what I do. Well, thank you. Bless thoughts to verses. Thank you. Blessings to all. Yeah, we need those blessings. Keep them coming. <laughs> Keep them coming. We love them. Bring it on. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. well several diagnoses myself um being that of and it's a big thing now they're they're proving all of these things as a matter of fact i just watched my first ted talks on um childhood abuse and trauma Ooh. childhood and yeah. that affects you of course in many different ways not only do you end up with if you're stuck in that situation growing up you have a certain type of ptsd called complex ptsd because you were mm -hmm. stuck in that's where everyone started yeah. So um, I have complex PTSD from um, childhood um, trauma, and then I have um, OCD, which I think half the planet has OCD now. Yeah, um, <laughs> me too. It's, what's your OCD. Mm. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> and uh, so those are my issues. I'm a social worker. Yes, we all need them. Absolutely. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. I actually was just speaking with a social worker, a, um, a psych, uh, not a psychologist, just a social worker who was a therapist who specialized in OCD and PTSD. And I started to see her, I was doing, um, what do they call it now? When you do the, um, you join in, you do it live like this. Uh, oh, like a Skype or something tele or Zoom? Yeah, I had a telehealth appointment. <laughs> Several, actually. So I have my psychiatrist, whom I love to pieces. He's an amazing dude. He's who pushed me to get into my writing like I have. So I owe him so much. He's an amazing guy. I wish I could, I, I would say who he is and all of that, but I want to ask him first. But he puts me, when, when I go up in, which afterwards I always say, I wish Ask me first, but he never does, and he laughs about it because he's he's a super cool dude. But he puts <laughs> me in on telehealth, and then he puts me in live with his students, and I am literally mm. talking to a classroom Zoom full of students while I'm on a telehealth appointment. <laughs> oh, geez, <And> thanks. <laughs> he does me every time, and I'm like, because he loves the fact that I'm goofy and that I I I'm I take a light-hearted approach. To the fact that we are all going through shit and mm -hmm. we're all in this together and that yeah. there are so many people with issues that mm -hmm. we're gonna do it's life live with it yeah that's why we need to normalize it right is because there's Absolutely. so many people out there that suffer <laughs> and that it's you know it's great. about time that we get used to uh to the idea that you know, yeah, it's not normal in terms of wanting to do it, but like stuff like suicide is normal in terms of there's a lot of people that, uh, you know, think about that kind of stuff. Sure. <laughs> Which is sad, um, but. I reading about it and um, the, 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 the suicide rate for the um, homosexual, 
the, for the gay community rose in quarantine. Um, people with any type of mental health issues during quarantine and isolation, it went through the roof. And mm -hmm. I think myself, thank God for communities like this. Thank God right. for telehealth. Thank God for social workers like Thoughts to Verses. Thank God for these people that will listen to us. Hey, Shailandra, 51330, how are you? Um, so yeah, this, we're very lucky that we live in a technologically, a technological time where if we are stuck and we can't go out, then we can at least do this type of thing and, and connects to other people that have issues because it's a big mm -hmm. deal. That's it is. Thing. And it's so, it's so nice to be able to connect with other people that can relate to it too. Like I've had to spend so much of my life just explaining myself to other people. So it's nice to find other people that just kind of get it. Right. Yeah. Cause I have a borderline personality disorder and, uh, bipolar and OCD and social phobia and PTSD, like the list just keeps growing every time I see there a therapist. Very little. And I got out of that as I grew older, but I started to reach for things like addictions, like alcohol and things like that in my twenties to try and buffer mm -hmm. them because I had social anxiety mm -hmm. and then kind of got out of that um, just by force. I literally, it's like exposure it? therapy. I just had to, yeah, I had to constantly just like put myself in those situations so that it would desensitize me towards it. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And that's, that's what I do too. I call it exposure therapy. It's probably some kind of other yeah. word for it, but do you know, these technological terms, I, I, <laughs> I've been doing a lot of reading. <laughs> A lot of learning about myself and about my diagnoses and yeah so this is where i've come to kind of accept the fact that i am pansexual as well uh through my recovering from mental health and kind of uh discovering things that i've kind of suppressed in because yeah. of my past and, and stuff like that so yeah i could talk about mental health lots <laughs> me too Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I don't know what your um, triggers were as a child. Obviously, it was from when you were a, a young girl. Yes. Trauma that you experienced. Yes, myself as well. Um, and so when you are are exposed to this at such a young age, you really don't know what to do with it because there was uh -huh. no one. Then. Especially me. I'm I'm a little older than you. I mean, I was brought up in. When I was a te when I was a little girl, I was early '80s to late '80s, and then teenage years was late '80s, early '90s. So, for me, there really wasn't anyone to talk to about that except my mother. Thank God for my mother; she saved she saved my life. My sister as well, um, because my father was a very abusive person, and he abused me physically. He abused my sister sexually, but he verbally and emotionally abused my entire family. So mm. you're dealing, when you're dealing with a narcissistic, sadistic type of personality that enjoys hurting other people, it's a very mm -hmm. scary thing to live in. And that's where it, PTSD becomes complex because you're stuck and there's mm -hmm. no way to out. And I don't know why I'm using my pen like a wand. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea why I'm doing this. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> it just proves the point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A brief point. But anyway, yeah. So um, there's lots of things that can trigger these types of things. And when you go through life and you have triggers, you know, they set you back. And mm -hmm. like what we're doing right now, people that have OCD, PTSD, it's it's triggering a lot of people. And that's where, like you were talking about the suicides and all of that. that. Wow. Just a lot. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it is true that uh, that the numbers go up in in like the gay communities and and all of that stuff. Not even just in quarantine time, but like they have we deal with a lot of shit, right? I haven't yeah. seen it myself so much yet, 
I'm sure I probably will from time to time uh, in the yeah. future. But uh, I know my brother who's transgender, like he he's had to deal with some really shitty people and, you know, which is horrible. I, I don't understand uh, why somebody's sexual or, ah, what's it called it? gender identity would ruin somebody else's day so much that they would just have to be complete monsters to them. It just breaks my heart to see what he has to go through. <laughs> yeah. Evil it comes from an evil place. When you mm -hmm. uh, super to lean on loved ones and allow others to understand us. Yes. Thoughts to verses. You're right. Absolutely. We must um, lean on the people who support us and sometimes we is our friends and people that we can reach out to it's not necessarily just you know our blood relations thank god you know i have very accepting children and i i they're my friends now <laughs> since we're so close in age um, <laughs> i know it's crazy but um yeah so definitely i see where you're going with that um leaning on other people hey guys if anyone wants to jump in request to speak that's okay too yes absolutely and yes of course if anyone wants to jump in and have a discussion please all you have to do is jump out jump back in and the request should pop up it did not for me twice but then on my third chance actually it did so there's lots of glitches <laughs> It's just the way it is on IG right now because we're inundated, but come on in and have a conversation and ask some questions. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> and we can always do this again. We will. We're going to do this again. We will every Thursday, right? We're going to have some chats. We're going to have some chats. I like chats. Once we have it set up as a time, then um, and people know what we're going to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully we will uh, be able to to, um, I have lots of, but I didn't really get into much of it because, you know, we kind of answered our, actually, you and I kind of bounced off each other for a while. We were answering our own questions. You know, <laughs> yeah. That's what's awesome. That's what's awesome about going live with somebody else, right? I have notes too, but I barely looked at them. <laughs> yeah. How do people know if they're lesbian, gay, or bisexual? What causes a person to have a particular sexual orientation? There's so many different you know, questions that we can ask. But the bottom mm. line is we're all, we're, we're all in this together. We're mm. gonna love love and it just needs to be accepted. And um, anyone who uh. has any thought on the conversation or the topic, jump on in and um, Come in. <laughs> saying that and we're like, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, for sure. Next time we'll, we'll definitely be a little bit more, um, on the bowl. I tried to blast it out as much as possible, but they, ch you know, what's crazy. They changed the algorithm eight months ago, nine months ago. Here on Instagram. Um, yes. They changed the algorithm. They changed everything. You can't wow. even have outside. Um, like there was an account that I was using to get rid of people that did not have anything to do with writing, that they were ghost followers, things like that. You can't join in any outside um, of those types of apps now. You can't use those. Oh, geez. So, if I have ghost followers or whatever, I don't know. I have no clue. Whatever. I guess the ghost followers are following me. But this yeah, I don't even think about that. <laughs> month before last or last. No, it was month before last. Mm -hmm. So, um, because what's going to happen, and if anyone doesn't know this, I'm telling you now, mm -hmm. I found out that they are absolutely 1000% going to be making this like YouTube where you can get monitored. There will mm -hmm. be, um, little, um, commercials or, um, what are they called here? Um, yes. <laughs> yes. Pop-ups, there'll be pop-ups, there'll be things on our, if we do IGTV videos, then what we can do, you can buy a certain type of, of sticker or some type of, of badge that goes on your IGTV video and it will bring more people into your IGTV video. And then once that happens, at some point you get monetized and I don't know how that works. I don't go on to get monetized. <laughs> so, but I <laughs> That is the reason why they have slowed things down to a turtle's crawl and they are um, not making it 
they're making it much more difficult and it's not as organic as it was. And they're probably going to hear me saying this and I don't care. <laughs> yeah, probably. They're probably watching. They're like well, the three other people that are in the room. <laughs> his best friend who is an actor, they are verified. So they get information before I do. And Andy oh, yeah. actually very in the know when it comes to tech and all of this. So he knows stuff too. So whenever I have a question, I'll either ask my <laughs> Andy. friend or Andy knows stuff. So sucks yes. for us. Well, now I know stuff too, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so Brian's like, damn it. He's taking our people. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> kidding. I love Brian. Kidding. He's amazing. <laughs> He always has great lives. Brian Edwards. He has oh, yeah. Lives. He has great lives. Um, a Panopoly of Poetry. They have a Panopoly of Poetry. Is that how you say it? Yeah, they have great lives. Um, there's a lot of people who have great lives. I love everybody's yep. lives. I don't go live all that often, except for now, I guess. I just do it yeah. on my own, just really sporadically. <laughs> I go on live. When I can, when I have the time, I was actually able to carve out this time when my daughter wasn't in the studio because they stayed up to get certain packages delivered for my birthday. So I was like, because <laughs> they were food. <laughs> food and aged beef and all these fabulous things for my birthday. So I'm like, hey, and they're going to cook. <laughs> I don't cook. So well, happy. even better. You know how happy I'd be if my kids would cook me supper? My oldest is 13, so I'd be like, craft dinner. <laughs> hey. It put works. a can of it in there, you've got gourmet mac and cheese. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whatever works, eh? <laughs> well, you know, your 13 is going to be 23 soon, and then they can cook you a real meal. My youngest you daughter is, oh my God, it can cook so good. And I <laughs> can only do certain things that are just okay. <laughs> Same. Really well, good at, I mean, my kids have to. Be. Really good at soup and <laughs> Italian dishes. I have a really good friend who's Italian who taught me. But other than that, nice. I burn it. I make things taste like crap. My daughters taste them. They're like, pass the salt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. Um, back to the conversation. Yeah, we kind of got off track there. <laughs> um, so. I was saying to Andy in the very first hour that, believe it or not, in 1975, this is when I was born, um, <laughs> they were just debunking, psychologists and psychiatrists were just debunking the fact that homosexuality and all of these different types of, you know, or whichever way you go, um, was being classified as a mental disorder. Oh, yeah. People stock treatments. People were going to these homes. Isn't it where they crazy? Isn't it crazy the shit that they would do to people back then for like ridiculous reasons? And it's just like, oh, I'm so glad they don't lobotomize people anymore because I would have been gone a long time ago. <laughs> I'm telling you, amen, sister. Not only that, they used to show like homosexuals and it was not talked about with women and they didn't really come out. Lesbians didn't come out then. But um, gay men, they would put them in homes and they would show them pictures of, you know, men half dressed, half naked, you know, their private parts hanging out for the world to see. And they would see if they got an erection. If they did, they would shock them. Oh, geez. Yeah. It's like what you would do with a dog. That's crazy. I, know. I wouldn't even do that with my dog. <laughs> it's crazy. I know, like you don't even want to put a shock collar on your dog. Why would you do that to a human being? Oh, <sighs> so sad. It's crazy. Uh, okay. I was watching yeah. something on Netflix. I think I can't remember what it's called, but it was about the doctor that uh, first discovered the lobotomy or whatever. It was like the most fucked up thing I've ever watched. Sorry about my language, but uh, <laughs> oh. let the f word fly too. I was so scared too, though. I didn't want it. I feel. <laughs> I'm so afraid that I'm going to offend people. We live in an over <laughs> society where people are so sensitive. Right. But 
basically going to kick us out soon, by the way. I'm just letting you know oh. right now. Those dead air on us. They're going to kick us out. So basically, let's end with this. The fact that, okay, we came on to discuss a certain topic. It was pride. We, we went a couple different directions. We discussed mental health. We discussed gay, lesbian, transgender, pansexuality, transgender, gender equality. We're going to come back on next Thursday. We're going to talk about it again. So you guys, we're going to try and save this. Matter of fact, when you come off, Ashley, try and save the video and then share right. the story. So that way people can go on and they can listen to it. But what we will do is we will start promoting it now. That way we get some more people that are interested. In oh, right. Well, there's so much that we can cover too. So it's a good topic. Well, definitely. You and I can talk um, direct message as well. You and I, now that we've met. And we yeah. can come up with, um, you know, game plans and where you want to go with it. Sounds good. Job. Sounds cool beans. Good. Well, it was awesome chatting with you. Join in, join in. Anybody want to join? No. <laughs> Not today. Not, Not today. today. That's okay. It's okay. Next time. It was nice chatting with you. Have a good Thank evening. You, Ashley. I'm finally. I'm so sorry it was so glitchy. And, um, you had to sit there on dead air for a little while by yourself. That's cool. <laughs> Times and I even went on mine to see if it worked, but um, yeah, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna go on probably in a few minutes just to see if mine's working again because it wasn't at all. And no, um, people weren't getting there because a couple of people mentioned they were trying to come on with me, and I couldn't uh -huh. do that cause I back on with you, but they weren't getting their um, their little request. Their little to come so oh, well, hopefully, it's fixed next time. All right, sweetie. Shall see. okay. Talks. We'll see you guys soon, Dark World. Have a good so night, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, Joe Shuler. We'll see you guys soon. Bye, Bye guys.